Ladies and gentlemen, if you want one of the new Ruby High on Freedom, Low on Oil Pressure t-shirts, they are only available on pre-order until midnight tonight, Tuesday, March 19th, 2019, at midnight Eastern, the pre-sale ends. So, High on Freedom, Low on Oil Pressure, enjoy the video. Hello everybody, welcome back to Cletus's McFarlane Racing Engines Assembly Class. Today I'm going to show you how to oil the cam bearings. There's only one way to do this properly, and this is with the, the Squirter 3000, okay? What you're gonna wanna do is aim her down track, right? Line her up in the groove, and then grip with two hands, kick your pinkies out for balance, bend your knees, and give her up. <laughs> Did it come out the other side? Uh, it came. Did it come oh, yeah, out? Look. It, that's what I'm talking about. See, all right, stay there, James. Stay there. You ready? Yep, let her rip. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fallen YouTube channel. What's going on, guys? We are here in the shop today, and we are going to be assembling version 3.0 Ruby's new junkyard sorta engine because it is a junkyard block, it's a junkyard crank, but we're putting some aftermarket Texas Speed rods and pistons in it. We'll be doing a Texas Speed cam as well, Texas Speed heads. You know, they're the same heads that we've had on the last two engines. So we'll be taking these out today to fast forward race engines because they got to get decked. They're all warped up from that big freaking heavy, nasty, hot burnout. Your first uh, engine assembly as a married man? Yep. First How's that one. gonna feel? It's gonna be a little bit different, but we'll get through it. <laughs> so we have our pistons and rods. These things are nice and purdy. So we gotta take our time. Make sure we keep everything very clean, you know, no dust. Got to uh, keep everything nice and oiled up. We have some directions from the machine shop, as well as we have the torque specs and things like that. And we're gonna we do also it right. got these from, he brought us these in uh, Houston. Yeah, what are those? It's all billet oiling stuff, like the oil here for the oil restrictor in the back of the motor. And oh, the front yeah. Plug and everything. Yep, yep. They're all billet aluminum ones, so they're oh, a little yeah. bit better than the stock plastic ones. Well, it can't be that. So, using some parts from some fans, and we're going to put this thing together and hopefully have oil pressure for more than two passes. Mm. Gosh, look at how pretty it is. It's all so clean and nicely decked. Some black paint on Even there. got the black paint on there. This looks like a freaking million dollar engine right here, but sure is. Chewy. She's just a little machined up old junkyard engine. We got those new cam bearings, new main bearings. We're doing it right. This is exciting. So we got to pull these main caps off and set the crank in there. And we are using our stock crank that was in this engine for about 200,000 miles. We just had it polished up and really that's, that's about it, right? Yeah. And so she's gonna yeah, they checked it out up there yeah. fast forward and everything was fine with it so as far as we know a stock crank can hold a thousand horsepower pretty easily yeah oh it's over here under the buttered popcorn holy crap i didn't realize how heavy these things are <laughs> good lord never held a crank before and they also uh tack welded on our reluctor wheel so that doesn't come loose yep so there's these little bolts in the side of the caps and those come out and then we gotta take these nuts off and they just rise right off of there, right? As yeah. far as I know. It'll be a little tight in the block, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. So we get those, they even numbered everything for us. This thing is dummy proof. Look how they put arrows on it and everything. <laughs> They're like, we're not letting them screw this up. They're a numbered factory in some blocks. But oh, really? They, uh, they put the arrows in just so they know, we know which way they were. Yeah, in gotta appreciate the... that. Cooper comes walking over with a smoothie and spills it on the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> well, Mountain Dew would be fine. Assembly, Cooper's yeah. got like a handful of sand. He's like, hey guys, take this out. <laughs> I just built the sand castle. <laughs> Ooh, they're eating so shiny. Some Doritos. Yeah, it's like eating Cheetos. <laughs> it's just like falling on the bear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the main caps are off. We're gonna clean up the crank, make sure everything's real clean in here, and then we're gonna stick it in. You know the deal. Layer up in there. <laughs> Look where they welded on the reluctor yeah, wheel. Yeah, them on so it, it can't get moved. Yep. Wow. That looks fantastic. All polished up. Like Damn. All, all brand new. Woo, brand new. Balanced up too, so. It's crazy what the machine shop can do to make a difference, you know, to a junkyard crank. It looks really good. Can we get her all lubed up? Only the finest. some break-in oil. Only the finest. Just get these bearings. Make nice. a mess. We don't care. The more, the merrier. Get these bearings all nice and lubed so there's no dry spots when the thing goes to fire. Right? Yeah, we don't want that. All right, make sure you put it in backwards. 
have a rear cam drive on there. <laughs> oh man, this is so exciting. The trick oh. is to be silent when you do it. Yep, silence is key. It's <laughs> like we're in a library. Woo! Man, this is so legit. Freaking McFarland engines. I can't believe how smoothly it was spinning right there when you like spun out with your hands, walked away. Woo. Version 3.0 is getting rowdy for old Ruby. Hell yeah. Ruby's not going to know what to do with herself. Dang. All right, so now we got to torque these down to ARP specs, and we got to follow a certain pattern. You do the inners first. We're going to be going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then you do the outers in the same pattern. And then we got to do the uh, the outside ones, these little guys out here. So we got James' good uh, snap on torque wrench. We know she's gonna do it right. <laughs> Only the finest for Ruby. You guys know the deal. Cranky is easy. Now I gotta do rods and pistons. Yeah. We gotta assemble them, the whole nine rings, which are already gapped, which is nice. Yeah. And we just get it going. Oh yeah, all torqued down, give her a spin. Ooh, fancy. Feels good. Yeah, we gotta. Few more to torque down on the sides and whatnot, but we are on our way. Guys, look, even James is letting me torque down a few things on this thing. I've graduated. I feel like I'm in second grade now. Are you doing a good job? <laughs> doing my best, Dad. <laughs> it's pretty easy with this torque wrench, though, I will say. Yeah, it's wasn't a cheap one, but so when it, worth it. It's so sick. When it counts on your motor staying together, you know you gotta have it. Yes, sir. We're out here just assembling race motors. You know the deal. Freaking drinking Mountain Dews. And drinking Mountain Dews on Monday morning and assembling our yeah, race motors. Torquing down our ARPs. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cletus's McFarlane Racing Engines Assembly Class. Today, I'm going to show you how to oil the cam bearings. There's only one way to do this properly, and this is with the, the Squirter 3000, okay? So what you're going to want to do is aim her down, down the... Uh, what you're going to want to do is aim her down track, right? Line her up in the groove, and then grip with two hands, kick your pinkies out for balance, bend your knees, and give her up. <laughs> Did it come out the other side? Uh, it came. Did it come oh, yeah, out? Look. It, that's what I'm talking about. See, all right, stay there, James. Stay there. You ready? Yep. Let her rip. <laughs> 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 all right uh, that went clear through and now your cam bearings are oiled to perfection Alrighty, guys so because our crank was balanced to all of these parts we have to make sure we do things right so we got to have our number one rod with our number one piston which james already grabbed and then we have to you know do two with two and make sure everything is correct otherwise the crank will be off balance and this engine will not last very long putting in the old Spir wrist spin clips is that what spiral those locks is spiral what locks yeah Instead of having like that C clip deal, it's actually like a spring and you spin it in. Okay. And then once it gets in the groove, holds it real tight. It's got like this kick up in it to keep pressure on both sides of it so it can't spin out. Interesting. The old Texas Speed pistons there and then the Texas Speed performance rods. And we got the pins here. All right, so we got one piston down here. We're actually both doing them and uh, pin is in. Got the spiral locks in there, which was. Kind of an interesting job. Shoot, I guess it's all good to go now, right? All right, guys, so we're getting the whole driver's side of the engine done right now. This is uh, piston number seven here. We got three and five there, and James is just about to start oh, sticking pistons in here. Just get everything all ready to get this thing to go Yes, together. sir, so gotta get her looking real nice. Make sure we keep everything real clean. This thing should go together right and make some power. Guys, I got one more to go. I've never been so careful in my life. I've been using so much oil. There's a massive mess. This thing's coming together and we are gonna have a real ripper on our hands with this one. We're all in there, we're all torqued down. Kind of exciting. Everything sounds and looks perfect, so this thing is well lubricated, let me tell you what. So far so good, just uh, gotta get the heads fixed now and the rest of this will go together, but for now, I'm gonna put a trash bag on it and it'll be sitting for the next few days. You're calling last. No, you're fine. Yeah. All right, so we're leaving Chick-fil-A and we were like, you know what? <laughs> Cooper, maybe you should just go through this thing really quick. Oh, uh, this seems like such a questionable idea. It is a great idea. I can't really see what's in front of me. Uh, grass, a little hill. Oh, maybe a small culvert. Oh, definitely a small culvert there. Oh! 
Okay. Okay. I blame you guys. <laughs> okay, we need to call for backup. Hold on. We gotta go. <laughs> Why did we do this? Alright, if anyone asks, we tell them. Hold on, don't give any gas. <laughs> <laughs> That's what screwed us is the culvert. You guys are supposed to be my eyes. It's fine, it didn't do anything. But we definitely framed out. Okay, Toyota on the scene. He dared me to do it. You got a strap in that thing? You got a toe strap? Oh, here we go. It's pretty deep in there, though. <laughs> you know what matters in all this, Coop? You got a toe hook up front? It's the fact no. that you went for it. I did try it. <laughs> you, you committed. Yeah. No questions asked. He threw this thing in four-wheel drive. <laughs> Didn't even check for a culvert. Just drove straight down it. Because we were parked right at the edge. We were like, so we, it's fine. We couldn't see forward. this. And this is what happened. Easy on the throttle, Coop. Slow her down. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bog deep, baby. <laughs> now that is how you bog deep. That's how you deep. bog deep. That's. <laughs> I got wrecked. <laughs> nice job, Coop. Hey, bro, you know how to bog deep. Hell yeah! Hey, look at that, man. I know exactly what you're going to do. <laughs> hey, bro, we owe you some T-shirts. Right, we all, we all better get out of here. See you, hey, see ya, bro. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, don't you love a good lunch break in the middle of the day? Holy smokes! <laughs> Thanks, man. Here for you, need us. Certified. We got a stamp. Certified ripper right here. Stamp. I, I tried. Don't you guys hate it when you get stuck on your lunch break? Yeah, yeah. Of course. happens to me all the time. I should have really bought Lazla sandwich for coming all the way out there. Yeah. <laughs> Even though that Tundra bro was there for yeah, the Yeah, dude, that Tundra win. guy was there was to help a out. Or no, he said Tundra. Tundra. All right, so now what? Push her aside and work on the subframe? What else we have to do? I saw you freaking were getting after her already. Bolted that thing right in there, no questions asked. Oh, yeah, he got excited. Man. Yeah, dude. Him. Look at how much room. I mean, that just right there is enough to say how much better this is. Worth it. So we have the same TRD Motorsport subframe on Leroy. We had to put it on Ruby because it makes life 1,000 times easier working on a Corvette. So we're ditching literally this entire kit is gonna be gone. We will be using pretty much none of this. None. Literally none because we have a brake kit, spindles, all the control arms, we have suspension, we're ditching the power steering, all that crap. We're gonna lose like 100 pounds off of this thing. It's freaking awesome so once we had it on Leroy when we were working on Ruby it was uh impossible to get to a lot of things so we just got her swapped out and we got to finish up the kit before we could put the motor back in oh baby look at all that so lower control arms upper control arms there's our steering brackets our spindles what a relief dude once this is on the car it's gonna be night and day difference oh yeah well we just got some nothing and bolting to do huh yep until the brake kit comes but we can get all these bolted on there and then yes sir Gotta wait on the uh, coil overs and the, uh, brake the brakes. Brake. Yep. So it's pretty straightforward putting these control arms on. You just gotta put them on either side of the spacers. The upper control arms bolt in just like normal, and we're going off of Leroy how many threads he has on his alignment. It won't be exact because Leroy's got a bent frame and stuff, and who knows if it carries all the way to the front, but we're gonna do it just to hopefully get Ruby close because when we first put Leroy on the ground we could barely push him in the trailer the alignment was so bad so this this might get us a little bit better off do we have any Mountain Dew James um yeah we have some oh and the, okay I see some Whoo, man it is hot it's a hot day out here today what should we do man should we go swimming we should we should swim better yet we should take the tracker swimming even better what's happening so uh we decided we wanted to go swimming but we can't really leave the tracker out of this or are you guys going swimming? Boy, I got a spot. But first, we need to make sure that thing can go swimming. Let's head to Home Depot. Tahoe's already ready. Tahoe, you want to take the Tahoe too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need a snorkel about 10 feet off the hood if we're gonna do this right. Agree. <laughs> All right, guys, here's the plan. We've been driving the bogger a little bit, but uh, we've had some issues with taking it into water. First of all, for those of you guys who don't know, 
This is my Geo Tractor that I bought off of uh, Craigslist. Real beast, but uh, it needs some work. So it's kind of muddy right now. Don't worry about that. The problem is when I take this thing into deep water, this fuel tank back here starts to fill up with water and it's a real problem and we couldn't get it sealed. Because it's had so much water through it, the fuel pump is now locked up in it and uh, it won't even start. So what we're gonna do is take the Dale Trucks old fuel cell, we're gonna take the Dale Trucks old fuel pump and we're gonna hook it up to this thing and we're gonna ratchet strap it to the top just for now, temporary. And then James reckons he can build a custom one-off snorkel that is gonna be at least 10 feet off of this hood. Touching the trees. We need it at least, yeah, probably about that high. Step number 10, we're gonna hop in this thing. Well, we're gonna probably put it on the trailer. And we're gonna drive to my buddy Chad's house who has a pond that no machine has ever crossed. We've tried it in side-by-sides and sunk them, but I reckon the tracker can do it. So to cool ourselves off, we are gonna get the tracker ready to go bogging. We're gonna take it bogging and we're gonna cross Chad's pond with this thing. And I have no doubt that we're gonna have success. It's going. We so gotta get the air through the map. We just ditch this. Ditch the air box, cause the stock snorkel leaks too. I got it deep enough to find that out real quick. Coupler, 90. Pipe. Pipe. That's Straight gonna up. be easy. And then we'll put this IAT sensor in the pipe. We got this covered, man. It's gonna be easy. Well, if this reads colder, it's gonna add fuel, right? Yeah, probably. We'll just leave it where it can get nice <laughs> and cool in the water. First thing, we gotta get this thing running though. Let's do the uh, fuel pump. Everything's good. And I even used a skid loader to straighten out the hitch. So we're bringing the four by four tracker back and we're going bogging deep. Four. You know what? We're going bogging deep, real, real deep. deep. This is, this is bogging deep. So guys, we got the fuel cell on the top here. We gotta make sure that we seal off those the uh, the vents that are up there. We're gonna only have one vent that will be routed to the top of our snorkel. And then we got the, the fuel pump is gonna be zip tied right onto there. You know, gravity feed, you know how it goes. Gotta have that right. Then we're gonna connect into this stock fuel line, which comes right up here. And then uh, we, we went ahead and disconnected the intake line right here. See the math is in there. And okay, that is- couplers, two and three quarter. Two and three quarters. So we need a 90 degree, a piece of PVC pipe, and then we'll probably just put a what a 10 or 12 footer on there. Yeah, let's see what you got. How much is that? Got the wind blowing. The wind is blowing. It's only at six foot. Oh yeah. Okay. It, need, it needs to be probably eight feet, I think. I think the pond is probably about 10 or 12 in the middle. No one's ever been out there. Uncharted territory. It's uncharted here? territory. Wow, that's six foot. Oh, it needs to be much higher than six Good foot. Wait for the wind to die down a sec. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna head to Home Depot right now, and then we got to go to the speed shop to get some fittings, and we will we'll be back. All right, we got our fuel line here. We got our fittings. We're this making is, it happen. This is gonna work, I think. So we got like 10 feet to run down. We got 20 feet, so we got to run from the fuel tank on the roof down to the factory fuel line. Factory fuel line, and then the rest we can run to the top of the snorkel. All righty, next stop, Home Depot. We gotta get our snorkel kit. Cooper, you might wanna take this thing through the pond just to clean it. <laughs> like, holy crap, man. Bog in deep, Ew. Holy cow, is that 10 foot too? Yep. Oh my gosh, that thing's heavy, huh? We're gonna have to build a brace. So do we need to get a hole saw as well? Yes. Okay. Whole saw blade. Damn, Cooper. Are your first time carrying something like that? Oh, no, no, no. Good thing the tile is so clean. <laughs> Can we get a little preview here? Let's see. Are we gonna leave this thing at the full 10 foot just in case the pond is deeper than we thought? No one's been deeper than No one. one's charted these territories. Oh, yeah, man. That's for real. Hey, get back up so you get a full go look at this. That is sick. I can't tell if it's a sweet diesel stack or if it's an intake for a tracker. Dude, there is no way we're not making it through this pond. Bogging deep. Bogging deep. There's no way we're not gonna make it through. Oh, we got the snorkel. It's pretty much a 100% chance that we'd make it through. Mm -hmm. There ain't no way she's getting stuck. I've seen this thing bog. If we have our cards right here, this is gonna be able to like, kind of be able to secure it right there. We're gonna cut our hole right here and don't mind the hole in the hood, guys. This hood is very beat. Someone made it out of body filler and the hood scoop from Advanced. I mean, this is this is not the nicest hood. It could probably use a stock one, but uh, we're gonna be kind of cutting a hole here to you put our it. pipe through. Ready? <laughs> I suppose, James. Bog deep, brother. 
Dude, look how much Bondo's in this. There's hood. a lot of Bondo, James. I know. Leave it alone. It's got a nice skim coat across the whole thing. Quit making fun of the tracker's hood. Hey, I have now we're down the metal. <laughs> I have I have the best custom hood, so I'm allowed to make That's fun true. of oh, every true, custom hood. True, true. Okay. The hood on the forty is ridiculous. Chris Thatcher. Oh Jesus! Oh, there's oh, more. Yeah, there's the inner layer. That's right. inner layer. Nobody said bogging was easy. No, no, no one said it was easy. I need to close a minute. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hold on. Now. Are you gonna sell this as a kit? Oh, something fell out. That's the dirt in your feet. All right, so it's not mounted completely solid yet. No, definitely not. Idea. Oh, it popped out. Oh yeah, the coupler popped out. All right, guys. Well, uh, we did a lot in today's video. We got Ruby's motor put together. We got the TRZ subframe hung and pretty much put together. And we have started the process of building this snorkel, which we will be testing tomorrow in my buddy's pond. Will we cross it? 100%. No matter what. I don't even know why I asked that. Do you have any doubts? Well, we'll cross it, but if the tracker don't, then we'll be... We'll be yeah, done. we'll have to cross it no matter what. No, the tracker's gonna make it. It's, it's a done deal. But if even if it doesn't, we can always revise our kit and come back. But as long as the intake is sealed, we should be good, right? Yeah. Where else can water get in? Um, the valve covers... I've had the engine underwater before, and it, it didn't have any leaks or anything. We were good. Yeah. The only time it's ever had water issues is when water got in the fuel. So we got to finish up the fuel system in the morning. We got to get all this final mounted up. We're going to have to build some supports for sure to hold this pipe because we had to get the three inch and it's super heavy. But uh, then, you know, we're hitting the pond. It's going down. Yeah, there so. you go. Also, uh, congratulations to Cooper on Bogger of the Week. So uh, it's now. only Monday, but oh, shoot, for now. Tracker might take it's it. Only for now. Right now, you're bogger of the week. So we're going to get this finished up in the morning. And the next video you guys will see is at my buddy's house trying to cross his pond. So thanks for watching. Do it for Dale. We'll freaking see you later.